Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan. I'm here on the island of Bohol in the Philippines. And uh, I was just up over here in the edge of the, the jungle area and trying to find some firewood and twigs and stuff. This is what I came up with here. Nice little pile. I had a garbage can I was stacking it in, and plus I wrapped the longer pieces up with a rope and brought them all back in one trip. So it's not too bad for a 20 minute walk around. Mosquitoes are thick here right now. We had a little bit of rain. Uh, probably about four days ago, maybe something like that, and they're just real thick. I got flies now too all of a sudden from the rain. But that's the way it is here in the tropics. You <clears throat> it's either feast or famine, either it's so dry that nothing will grow, or usually it's so wet that you have other guests like mosquitoes and flies and uh, I've been seeing a lot of big millipedes walking around and excuse me. A lot of traffic on the highway. There's a highway over that way about 150 yards or so. Kind of a dip so you can kind of hear them coming and going. But uh, Normally it's really quiet here as a rule. <laughs> Dogs here tearing up my fresh gravel, sand. But uh, it's pretty nice today. I uh, had, a, had a good day. I went and had a burger with the family which was real nice. It's a, kind of a treat for us. We haven't been out. Uh, this is the first time my daughter's been out to McDonald's since January, I think. January, early February. So it was a, all she had was their order of french fries, but I think she enjoyed it. And uh, But I thought I'd just sit here and ever since I got back here, again I'm just dripping wet, so I thought I'd just sit here for just a second. I had some weather coming in over here from the south, the southwest. I thought maybe I'd make it up here, but it's, it seems like it's seems like it's clearing up on our end. So it looks like it's going to miss us. But we could still use probably we could use three inches of rain a week would be great. But we usually get three inches of rain in an hour, and then you don't know when that is. <laughs> so it just kind of, it just comes down like crazy, and then it just turns right off. Be nice to have some nice long all-day rains to let it soak in the ground. And here we have nothing but um, super hard clay with rocks. That's all we have. There's no topsoil here whatsoever. This is the soil here, just basically clay, clay and small stones, sometimes big stones. Um, you know, 100 years ago, this was jungle, so usually jungle areas have very poor soil. But uh, we do what we can, and we usually have pretty fair gardens. The secret's the water. That's our main thing for our gardens. Um, I add a lot of different things to the soil. Kind of, you know, this is kind of a homestead project all the time here, and uh, I try to grow as much stuff as I can here for the family. My wife and daughter like vegetables. My wife especially, she likes almost any vegetable whatsoever. And squash, acorn squash looking stuff grows good here. Okra, sweet potatoes grow good here. On and off you can get cucumbers to grow, just depend on the, it's like a roll of the dice. Tomatoes, nothing. Something kills the tomatoes every time. Potatoes, nothing. Something kills the potatoes every time. I've tried them a hundred times. Um, green, big long green beans grow pretty good here. You know, the ones that are about 18 inches long, they grow pretty good here. But, uh, it's limited. But what we have, again, she'll, she'll use that stuff and then we'll buy a few vegetables here and there at the markets. Uh, we're having a big problem right now. All the at least the market I went to today, the prices were all double what they were a week ago. Uh, the virus greed, I call it. Uh, the price gouging is in. So uh, I'm hoping it's not. It's our market day tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go to the outside market and see if there's anything there worthwhile. I'm looking for potatoes. Uh, life's not the same without a, a potato.
potato. I can eat I can eat rice every day. You know, just plain rice, but I got to have something to go with it, you know, and to me the best thing to go with it to me is a potato or a, 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 I like fried fish or whatever. I had last night I had um cream dory fish, which is kind of like a catfish looking fish from Vietnam. They're you can buy them fillets here frozen. They have about a quarter to a half inch of ice around the outside of each piece, so you have to pay. F so you buy a key, you buy a kilo of this stuff, you get about 800 grams of fish from a kilo, if that. Or no, not 800 grams. You get about a kilo. A kilo would be a hundred, a thousand grams. You would get about 400 grams of fish. The rest would be ice. So if you buy a kilo, 2.2 pounds, you get about a pound of fish out of it. But it's good though. We cut it real thin, roll it in flour, and fry it in um, soybean oil. It's very delicious. Last night I had um, a couple little pieces of it with plain rice. It was pretty good, but it's much better with potatoes and some bread or something like that. But um, what you get, what you get, and, and I try to enjoy whatever I have. I, I've only been getting a, a meal of meat about every 10 days now lately, so it's it's not enough. But like I say, today I had a hamburger, so I had a had a double cheeseburger it was pretty good. Plain, just a pl no cheese, just a burger, and uh, very enjoyable for me. But I thought I'd start a quick fire here and then uh, head up to the house, I guess, and get some ice water and sit down and relax for a while. Get out of the mosquitoes, they're driving me nuts, getting bit up. Let me change the camera angle here once and uh, it should be about right there I guess let's see tip her down there she is got a little bit of uh, small wood here I got some coconut netting here all, all cut up let's see if I can get this to go I don't know it's pretty damp out it's been raining on and off the last couple days so uh, this stuff all got a nice rain the other night two nights ago I guess it was it feels sort of dry just again it's just hit and miss and trial and error here let's see what we got here started to see if it'll take off. Give it something to climb into, I guess. You can see it's damp though, otherwise it normally would just take off like crazy. wrestling over a seed pod. We've got four puppies now. They're all jostling for who's going to be in charge. I don't have small enough kindling on there. It's not going to start. Coconut net burning.
Looks like it wants to burn, but... Ouch! That's hot. That got me good. What are you barking at? Huh? What are you barking at? little stuff. Sometimes down here in the tropic it's real hard to get it real hard to get a fire going. Um, it doesn't take much to dampen stuff up. I know I never I never take a fire for granted here I can tell you that. I have so much better luck doing my fires in the bridge methods, not making them in a can like this or something, but I need to have air underneath them. Maybe I'll put a put a bridge underneath there like that. There we go. That might make all the difference in the world right there. I put my double bridge in like I really want. There we go. Get a little fire built across that. That might be the ticket. One of those towels that you drip in the water, pour it in the water and it turns into a towel. Friend Bill told mentioned that they make, make good tinder. <laughs> I never even thought of it, but they do. I don't know if that's enough there to get a spark or not. But when I touch it, I, I waterlog them so fast. But I'll set that aside. What else can I use here? My main tinder usually is shaved bamboo. But I don't think I have any down here. I have a piece of bamboo. I guess I could scrape once. Give that a try. I have my... I have my Mora... Mora Classic with me here. There's a piece of bamboo. Try to get a couple scrapings off it maybe. This all got rained on too, so it seems like it seems like the bamboo has just some sort of a little coating on it that keeps it pretty dry, even in the pouring rain. You can usually scrape down in it and get viable tinder and firewood. Cut these pieces off and, and split them up. Usually have some pretty good wood. Again, the secret of having a nice sharp knife really makes a big difference. I usually do this with my one of my bolos or parangs. It's like a big draw knife then. In fact, I never never in fact I never used a smaller knife until just the other day. And I see that it does a nice job, so I can continue to use it. 
So how are you guys doing today? Have you guys been getting out having fun? I see they're opening up a lot of stuff in America more. Hear about a lot of guys doing fishing and stuff like that. I haven't been fishing in about 13 years. Pretty much fished out where we're at. You have to go way out in the, the reefs to get anything decent here. And we don't have a boat. Not anymore. We had a boat for a while, but yeah, see I got this all, all wet already just touching it. It's kind of a rough scraping sound. That's when I'm getting the outside coating. When it gets quieter, then I'm getting down into the, the wood of the bamboo, which also is good for scraping too. For shaving. That's the outside. That's the inside. Hey, dogs, get out of here. Come on, shush, shush. Get out of there. You got my camera. Come on, get away. Got four puppies running around here trying to get into everything. <laughs> it's gonna knock the camera over. Ooh, one goes, the other one has to go. That's probably enough bamboo, I guess. But I'm having a good time here. I'm just trying to. Stay relaxed. I try not to think about the virus stuff. We're still on quarantine here. We're not on the, the hardest, harvest, the hardest uh, um, quarantine. We're on the second quarantine where a lot of the businesses are allowed to be open. Like today, McDonald's was open. But the island is still closed. I always try to break down the bamboo a little bit. I roll it up into a ball. And then pull it apart. Okay, guys, you got to get out of here now. Come on, knock it off. And then pull it apart. Kind of breaks it up a little bit. I, sometimes I do this twice. But every time I touch it with my hands, they're soaked, so it's transferring moisture to it, which isn't good either. But Let's see if we can get this to take a, a spark and then we'll put this in, the, in a can once it gets going. Now I thought I told you guys to hit the road. Come on, you're right under the camera. Here. There it is right there for you. There's nothing under the camera anymore. There you go. I'm using a firesteel.com ferro rod and a little eighth inch high speed steel striker seems to work pretty good okay we'll keep going Far from bursting into flames, isn't it?
You see, you get that much smoke, it bursts right into flames. See if that fire up in there will get started at all. Crazy, is it? Um, one stick burning. Burn it from the top down, maybe. Just keep adding to the top of it. I had someone ask me what did I think about the upside down fires. I've, I've never really done them before. They look like they work pretty good. The videos I've seen where the, you know, you start your fire on top of a bunch of big logs and then it just kind of falls its way down through it burns its way into it. I don't know what you guys think about it. I'm a firm believer in the double bridge method. That's my favorite fire of all time, fire lay of all time. I've had the best luck with it. There's a slight little breeze, it's really it's way better yet. Because then the air kind of comes up underneath it. I think I might be going hungry tonight if I was depending on this for heat and food, doing my water and stuff. I might be able to get a cup of water boiling on between a couple of rocks if I kept putting in real fine stuff maybe, but. Right there, here we go. About a lot of good stuff here though, good net.
Now you think a fire like that would get the little twigs going, but it's not always a for sure thing here. Sure would think so, wouldn't you? I got all nothing but almost crumbly dead wood here. Wood looks like it's actually burning out a little bit. This log here looks like it's burned, but it, you can't see it from right here, but it's just oozing moisture out of it. See that? Just foaming. So that's how damp everything really is. That's burning now. And the secret would obviously would be to make sure you just kept it kept feeding it until it got going real good and a little bigger stuff going. The wood here doesn't coal. The only wood that'll that'll coal up here, you see this big piece right here? That's Tugas. That's our only hardwood here. Now that does actually coal up pretty nice. But I can't I can't use it as a firewood. It's just I mean that's one piece I have there. I, I carried that. I drug that for almost a mile. Get up here I was gonna make some spoons out of it and some different things. I want to make a couple mallets. The mallet that I made the other day, I don't know if you saw that video, I used that mallet and the mallet head broke right off once it dried out. I cut into it too far. I think that would grow now. If we had that between a couple rocks, we could probably definitely cook a bowl of soup or something I would think but look it's look it's just it's almost went out now on its own I have in my bag I have a nice little hand fan like a little Chinese hand fan those work pretty good for keep some air into the fire And sometimes here you really have to sit there and just babysit the fire till you get your cooking done or whatever you're gonna do and and then just you know let it go and it's still going pretty good. I hope this isn't too boring for you guys. I'm just sitting here relaxing, wasting time till it gets dark, and I want to go inside and have some ice water or something, I think, and get back on the computer. And I usually spend at least at least 10 hours a day on the computer, editing videos and uploading videos. It takes forever to upload stuff here. I had a 20 minute video the other day, took four hours to upload. And it's even worse is you'll, you'll do something like that for two or three hours and the, then the power will go off or the internet will kick off and then you lose what you have, you got to start over again. A little root burns good, look at that. That's a root off of a little tropical colored leaf plant. With one of the, the died up the it died and I dug up the stump. Might be a good thing to keep in mind. Cut off little roots like that and keep a bag of those. Maybe that maybe that'd be an excellent tinder. Just gotta constantly be experimenting with different things, especially here because it's so different than back home. Back home, I never had a problem getting a fire going. It's 
It's a nice little fire, I guess, huh? Another one of those roots. It's real. Got a real interesting texture to it. That's that's actually burning quite well. Look at that. Compared to the other wood, that's that's burning fantastic. Wonder if there's some kind of oils in the root. I will save that. I've got another one over here just about burned through. Right there, I'll save this one too. Need something to screw around with. But the funny thing, that's the last of the roots that I have. It took me a long, long time here in the Philippines to find wood that would work for the uh, bow drill. I did it for a whole year, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get any woods to work at all. I couldn't even get an amber. And uh, I just set a pile of junk away, and, and I ran across it a couple years later and tried it again. And then I got an amber, but I didn't know what kind of wood I was using. Look at all that. Look at that stuff just just gushing out of the the logs. So there's definitely moisture in there, isn't there? I can actually hear it sizzling out, like it's boiling out. It's boiling and steaming out. Touch it, it's probably hot as can be, I bet. Interesting. But I never did do a bow drill back in Iowa. Never. I wasn't a Boy Scout or anything like that. And we started a fire, we used a mat, we used a lighter. Made made kindling, stuff like that. You know. Bark scraping, stuff like that, dry grass, different things. But never ever used a never used a bow drill, never used a ferro rod until I was here and I can't say that I'm a master of the uh, bow drill or anything like that but I'm, I'm pretty good at it here I have a pretty good percentage rate and again it all depends on the conditions it's, it's just all everything has to be absolutely perfect here the right wood the right humidity um, sometimes you can just go and go and go and go and go and it just doesn't work I think I'm gonna take this one off here this is that's an interesting piece here that's where the roots came from that piece seems to be burning pretty good. And actually a little extra a little coal there, which is kinda odd. Usually stuff here burns to ash right away. Our wood's real hard to cook with. It's either cranking super hot with a flame or it's real cool because it's not cold it's almost ash and I have a barrel stove over there that I made it makes beautiful pizza if you keep a good fire roaring underneath I can keep a, a temperature over 500 degrees in it it's absolutely fabulous for pizza and I, I like to make uh, like mall pretzels stuff like that it can bake Big bread. I've done a couple cakes in there. Cakes are way harder though to try to keep a a constant temperature with a cake. Try to keep a 300 degree temperature with a cake. Holy cow, that's tough. But but it does work though. We've I've done many many cakes. Brownies cook pretty good. But the best is the the mall pretzels, the soft pretzels. That's my absolute favorite snack. And it's not that much work. It's, it's about a three-hour project to make the dough and let it rise, and then you have to boil everything in um, baking soda, water, and then bake it at 325 to 350 or so to 400 degrees until it gets brown. They raise a little bit, 
and you have your salt already sprinkled on them before you bake them and uh, I like to dip them in uh, strawberry preserves oh man is that good I haven't done it for a long time I, we have an oven in the kitchen now so we should probably be doing it more often but Now you see the smoke here? Now the smoke is coming out from underneath the pan. The log is actually burning underneath the pan. Which is what I was trying not to do with the pan. Have you guys ever made any spoons or kuskas using a, a coal or a bowl? Something like that? using a, uh, embers or coals to, to burn out your depressions. I've seen that before. That looks like a lot of fun. I've never made a kuska yet. I made a, uh, dozens and dozens of spoons, but I didn't really use a, a curved knife or anything like that. I used uh, a file to get my, do my most of my work. And that was before I had a curved knife. I tried to make one the other day with a curved knife and, the, and a hatchet and uh, a knife and that. And it was, it's a spoon, but boy, it's not a very good one. Far from fancy, I'll tell you that. All right, how should I get this pan? That pan's hot. I assume it would be in. Let me set this down for just one second. Stuff out of the way here. Oh yeah, scorched my log a little bit. Enough that it's glowing. Go up to the house, get a little water, I guess, and put it out. Or is that a smolder all night? All right. Well, thanks for tagging along, guys. I just wasting some time. Appreciate you guys watching a fire. I know I didn't talk about anything important, but I can tell you this: I'm having a good time. Uh, I enjoy watching you guys have fires. Hopefully you enjoy sitting here, talk, listening to me talk. The funny thing is, I, I don't know about you guys. You guys, I mean, you guys all have plenty of people to talk to back home. Your families and your friends and stuff like that. I, I don't have any friends here at all that are bushcraft guys at all. I've got uh, one friend from Alabama, nice guy. His name's Don. I got another friend named Philip. He's a kind of a mountain man type guy, old truck driver in his 70s. Another guy named George is a good friend of mine. A couple other friends here and there, but um, I don't get to sit down and talk with them all the time. And when I'm when I'm doing my videos, this might sound funny to you guys, but when I'm doing my videos, it's like I'm talking to you. It's like you guys are sitting here in the campfire with me. I'm sitting here talking with you. It's the same thing when I'm driving my car, and I, I do a lot of videos driving car the car, and I have something on my mind. I talk about it, and it passes the time. You know, just like I was talking to somebody else, and it and it's actually I'm actually having a conversation with whoever I'm talking to about what I'm talking about when I'm have the camera going. Um, I mean, I'm not psycho or nothing like that, but that's that's the way it is to me. It makes at least that's the way I feel when I'm talking to the camera about bushcraft stuff. It's like I'm talking to you guys, and I don't know if that I don't know if that's weird or not. I don't, maybe you guys feel the same way when you're doing stuff. I'm not sure, 
But for me, it's pretty cool because, again, I don't have anybody to talk to about bushcraft, and I really enjoy commenting on your comments and stuff like that and, and you know, reading what you have to say. And uh, I know my videos should have, like, a subject or something like that and, you know, tie five knots or whatever, but... You know, make a trap or do this or that. But sometimes it's nice just to sit back and, and talk and hope it's okay with everybody. I don't want to bore everybody out. And if it, if it does suck for everybody, tell me, okay? And I'll, I'll figure something else out to do. I don't want to, I don't want to be a, a pain to everybody. I want to be part of the community and, and I want everybody to enjoy me as much as I enjoy all you guys. So, all right. That's all I got for now. Please click like and subscribe, and you can email any, me anytime at blindowloutdoors at gmail.com. And uh, get outside, have some fun, go for a hike, do what you got to do. Get outside, don't sit around in the house, waste your time in front of a TV. You know, evening after dark, that's the time to sit at the computer. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your nice. Nice daytime, you can get out there and have fun and get on the water and whatever you're going to do. So, everybody be careful, be safe, and uh, thanks a lot. See you later.